everyone, I'm Christy Vanover from Girls Can Grill. Today I'm here with Barbecue Guys to show you the DCS Series 9 Gas Grill. This is more than just any standard gas grill. It's got a rotisserie. It has an infrared burner for that epic sear. Plus, you can cook with gas and charcoal. When you order your DCS Series 9 from BarbecueGuys.com, you have a few options. First, you can decide if you want all the burners to be standard U-burners, or if you want to replace one U-burner with an infrared burner for searing. Then decide if you want a 36 or 48 inch wide grill. The larger grill comes with one extra burner. Choose your fuel source, either propane or natural gas. Finally, you'll need to decide if you're going to build this into a barbecue island, or if you want to mount it on a freestanding cart. Today I'll be showing you the 36 inch model with propane on the cart. Let's start with assembly. The grill, cart, and shelves will be packaged separately. The cart is already assembled, but the grill will need to be mounted to it. Start by removing everything inside the grill to reduce the weight. This grill is really solid and pretty heavy, so you're gonna wanna grab a buddy to lift it up and put it right on top of the cart. It just takes a few screws to attach it. Next, remove the right drawer and mount the transformer box to the back of the cart. Then connect the three pin plug to the box and the wiring that's attached to the grill. If you purchase the propane model, place the drawer back inside the cart and add a 20 pound tank in the designated slot. Make sure the tank valve is closed and attach the regulator hose. Everything tucks away nicely inside the drawer. To add the side shelves, use the included screws to mount the two brackets. Then add two more screws to attach the shelf. Once secure, lift the shelf up and push it toward the grill to lock it in place. There are additional adjustments you can make to ensure the shelves are level. Then add the walnut cutting board for a sleek, functional finish. To add the electric rotisserie, first mount the bracket with the included screws. Once tightened, you can add and remove the rotisserie motor as needed. There are several components that go back inside the grill. First, you'll need to put together the radiant. This is a metal tray that holds 18 ceramic rods. There's a metal end cap that runs the length of the tray. Make sure this is snapped onto the radiant, then lift one end. Next, add 18 ceramic rods to each tray right into the grooves. Once they're in place, push the radiant end cap down and secure it. Now the radiant trays are ready to be placed in the grill. Because the grill's so versatile, there are so many ways that you can set it up. For traditional grilling, add the radiant trays over the U-burners, then add the dual-sided W-shaped grates. The W-shape offers a function similar to Argentinian-style grills, where the grease collects in the grates and flows out and away from the food. You can also flip the grates over for a flatter surface, which is great for delicate foods like grilled seafood. For even more versatility, you can also install the grates at a slant by balancing them on the higher slot on the back wall. This is ideal when you want food toward the back to cook more slowly, or when you want more fat to drip away from your food. Next, you'll notice you have two other grill grates that look similar. The one with the longer legs is for when you cook with charcoal. The one with shorter legs should be used over the sear burner. At this point, you can get cooking. With 630 square inches of cooking space, you can grill up a feast or a quick dinner for two. Just remember that you need to plug it in before you get started because you need that electricity for the automatic igniter. Then turn the dial to the left, pressing it down, and within a couple of seconds, the burner will ignite and you can adjust the temperature to your desired setting. Allow the grill to heat up for several minutes before adding your food. If you wanna grill food over direct heat, place it right on the grate over the burner that's turned on. This is great for chicken breasts, steaks, burgers, and vegetables. And because of the ceramic rods, you'll have minimum flare-ups. Most grease that drips between the grates will hit the rods and evaporate, adding delicious flavor back to your food. If you want to grill food over indirect heat, turn one burner on and cook the food on the grate over the burner that's turned off. This is great for reverse searing thick steaks or finishing off pork tenderloin. For that intense heat and sear, cook your food over the infrared burner. But remember, there are no ceramic rods under this grate, so flare-ups can happen. The infrared burner is also great for making side dishes. You can use it like a stove to boil water for pasta or potatoes. When you're ready to try out the rotisserie, add the motor to the mount and plug it in. Then make sure your meat is tied up and tight and slide it onto the spit. Once it's centered, secure it with one prong on each side and tighten those down. Insert one end of the spit into the motor and let the other end rest on the rollers on the left side of the grill. Place the secondary cooking tray on the grill grates under the meat to collect the drippings. You can add liquid, herbs, or vegetables to the tray for gravy or a side dish. To ignite the rotisserie, turn the rotisserie burner dial to the left. Hold it down for a couple of seconds until you see a reddish glow on the left of the upper burner. Then press the safety valve button for about 10 seconds. You'll hear the burner ignite. 
Let go of both the button and the dial. It should remain lit. Now you can adjust the dial to your desired temperature. For rotisserie chicken, turn the burner to medium and cook the chicken until it reaches an internal temperature of 165 degrees. This will take about 90 minutes. For crispy skin, you can increase the burner to high and finish cooking for five to 10 more minutes. Usually with gas grills, if you want barbecue flavor, you're limited to wood chips. But with the DCS Series 9, you get a charcoal tray so you can actually cook your food straight over charcoal. Simply remove the grill grate and ceramic rod tray from the grill. Then place the charcoal tray over the U-shaped burner. Add a layer of charcoal briquettes to the pan and turn the burner on to sear. The burner's heat will light the coals in about 10 minutes. Once they're lit, you can turn the burner off. If you're grilling burgers or steaks, you can add the charcoal grill grate and get cooking. If you want more temperature control or want to smoke foods over indirect heat, add the charcoal insert lid instead and adjust the vent. The wider it's open, the hotter the coals will burn. The smaller the opening, the lower the temperature will be. The grill has a built-in thermometer in the hood so you can monitor the heat. Then just place your food on the grill grate next to the charcoal tray and close the lid. If you want even more barbecue flavor, add one to two wood chunks. No matter if you're cooking over propane, using the rotisserie, or even charcoal, cleanup on the DCS is pretty straightforward. Any grease drippings that didn't evaporate on the ceramic rods will flow into the grease management system, which is a large tray under the burners. After every couple of cooks, pull the tray out and wipe it clean. There's no need to clean the ceramic rods, they pretty much clean themselves. And to clean the grill grates, just use a grill brush while the grill is still hot. For the charcoal tray, make sure the coals are completely extinguished and cool before dumping them. Accessories can be stored in the top left cart drawer and the rotisserie rod fits securely under the grease tray. The bottom left drawer has a drain plug and can be used as a cooler for your beverages. If you get the DCS9 on the cart with the extended side shelves, it is rather large. When the shelves are extended, it's 85 inches wide, which takes up a lot of patio space. But the cart is nice because the drawers offer great storage. The stainless steel finish is beautiful, but it does show fingerprints, so you'll want to wipe it down often with a soft cloth and stainless steel cleaner. Additionally, it's important to consider wind direction when you're installing this grill. You want to install it so that any wind would blow toward the grill. If the wind is going to blow from behind the grill, that could affect its performance. After cooking on this grill, I really like its versatility. Not only can I cook over direct and indirect heat using propane, I can also sear steaks, plus I can get that barbecue flavor by cooking over the charcoal tray. Not to mention it's got the rotisserie feature, so you can get perfectly roasted chicken and other large meats. But what really makes it different are the secondary cooking tray and racks. Some gas grills have puny little warming racks, but the DCS secondary racks are truly functional and offer 534 additional square inches of cooking space. These are great for foods that don't need direct heat, like potatoes and squash, or for side dishes like baked beans or greens. You can also use them to keep foods warm. This grill is a beautiful addition to any outdoor kitchen. From the 304 stainless steel, to the walnut shelves, to the bright interior and exterior LED lighting, it's a very impressive grill that will make a statement in your backyard. Again, I'm Christy Vanover of Girls Can Grill here with Barbecue Guys. I hope you've enjoyed this review of the DCS Series 9 gas grill. If you're ready to make a purchase or you wanna learn more, head on over to barbecueguys.com and don't forget to follow us on all social media channels. See you next time.